All right, what's up, gang? I wanted to give a quick tour of what I've been working on for the new home for Indie Hall. Uh, I'm going to take you through a 3D render in Google SketchUp. Uh, the render itself was actually put together by a guy named Quincy who works over at our new building. Quincy is the best. Uh, total renaissance man, in addition to being part of the team that runs the building, uh, is a super creative guy. If you've ever seen a Colonial Pen commercial, uh, which I'm not sure, w I mean, for, for m a lot of us, we wouldn't unless we were going to seek them out. Uh, but if you have, they, they feature Alex Trebek. Quincy actually writes those commercials. He writes the music for those commercials. Uh, he edits them. Super creative guy, and he's got this passion for designing things, and he really wanted to help out with the project, so he asked if he could take a version of the floor plan that we had sort of uh, discussed in Group Buzz about a month ago and lay it out in Google SketchUp and send it over to us. So uh, while this version is a little bit different from the final version that was submitted for permits, it is perfectly, perfectly good for getting a sense of the size and the scale of the space and how things can lay out. And it's actually been really helpful for me to uh, use Google SketchUp, which is this awesome free tool to, that also comes with a, a, a warehouse, a data 3D model data warehouse um, where I can grab IKEA furniture, including furniture that we already have, and so we're familiar with the size of it, and drop it right into the layout. So that gives us an instant sense of how big things actually are, which has been the hardest part of looking at all of these models because um, you know measurements on the walls and things like that only really do so much when you see it in physical space. It makes a big difference. So uh, I've been doing some playing. None of what you're about to see is final by any stretch. It's just to get a sense of size and scale and what kinds of things we can do and sort of how it feels. And I'll tell you what, when you start seeing furniture in the place, it starts feeling really pretty cool. So uh, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, I started the camera here in the elevator lobby on the third floor. For those of you that have, have come over to the building, you... Uh, remember, this is sort of an enclosed area, and here along this wall, we're moving the cursor now. There's a wall with a couple of TVs. That's all coming out. On the other side of this wall that is that is in the drawing is where the bathrooms are on the floor. Um, but here, uh, on the basically, we come out of the elevator on the right-hand side uh, at the end of this little, tiny little corridor, which they're going to set up as like a nice little lounge. We can help also influence that as well, hopefully hang some of our art and be a part of choosing the furniture that you see, this little lounge right off of the elevators um, but yeah right 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 ahead of you will be the entrance to indie hall and uh, i'm going to try and uh, move around moving around in google sketchup is a little bit clumsy so bear with me uh, and you'll see it sort of render in in real time as i move things around but this is what you will walk into when you come in this space so as sketchup and my computer catch up you'll see that right in here um, and for again for just perspective getting a sense of scale I've laid in a couple of different kinds of furniture um, these tables here uh, which is uh, going to be sort of our classroom and art gallery sort of all in one so the multi-purpose space um, it's obviously much bigger we'll be able to have more more seating if we want to do something sitting more people if we want to do something standing it's not that long skinny room um, a lot more flexibility here, um, sort of left this entryway open so we can figure out what to do. And uh, there's been talk of some something really cool when you walk in, whether that's like a, a cool, funky chandelier that we maybe make ourselves or something. I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, the space just adjacent to that um, is uh, we're thinking is going to be sort of the, the, the gallery space as well. So we're, we're installing you know, lights with that in mind. Um, and then, you know, these pull down projector screens for if we're doing presentations, maybe. Uh, and again, those are just just for placement for idea, not final by any stretch. Um, but if I sort of continue spinning this around, again, you sort of get a sense of, of size. Um, dropped in one of these IKEA Kivek uh, sofas, uh, a little chaise lounge is kind of nice. Um, uh, the other thing that I did f to sort of show how space can be broken up, because one of the challenges with this space being all on one floor and sort of wide open spaces you know, between sound and just sort of feeling like a, a giant, expansive football field of a room, I want to sort of break it up and hel help create spaces that do feel a little more intimate. Uh, and so I grabbed out of the little 3D warehouse these green walls. If you actually zoom in, you can see that they render and they look sort of like plants. Um, for better or for worse. Um, and these are just, I grabbed them because they're eight foot by eight foot. And the thought here is we can come up with some thing or collection of things 
with these movable walls that actually attach to the pillars. The pillars are permanent. They're part of the building structure. But if we can... Uh, if we can come up with different kinds of walls, some of them could be green walls. I think that would be very cool. Um, we can do some walls that are, you know, canvas stretched across frames so we can make them paint and maybe even change them from time to time or cork boards or white boards or cool like doors from salvage yards, whatever it is, we can get really creative with whatever we want. But using these panels to actually break up the space creates a bit more intimacy in these little zones which will like I said help take care of um, or help reduce sound moving and, and things like that and the idea is that rather than build them as permanent we can build them as movable and removable so depending on new layouts or different needs or even a need of the moment or the afternoon we can move a wall out of the way and, and open a space up or put a wall in a place where it's going to help uh, something happen a little bit better. So uh, that's there. Um, I did uh, actually go ahead and change the color of some of the IKEA desks. These are the same desks that we currently have. Um, when we move to the new spot, we're definitely going to be replacing a number of the tops that have been worn out. But the plan is to use the same, same kinds of desks uh, in light and dark colored surfaces. So we create our usual checkerboard style. And so full time and flex stay mixed. Um, and everybody uh, is sort of used to used to that pattern. And we know that pattern does good things for helping people meet each other, helping new members come in, feel like they're sitting around other people who know what's going on, Just sort of a really useful design pattern that we've learned over the years. Um, over here in this corner, you see the first couple of conference rooms. These are uh, pretty nice size conference rooms. Uh, and I'll show you for scale in just a second. Um, what's nice ab uh, about the layout here is we've got sort of a door on either side, and we have them putting in a uh, this nice horizontal window, so it's not going to be a coffin. Um, there will be a, a good amount of light be able to come in, obviously going to be well lit from the inside as well. But you'll be able to see that there's actually people inside or not. Uh, you'll be able to see what's going on. It should, should look really cool. Uh, you could potentially write directly on the glass with whiteboard markers, just no permanent markers, please. Um, uh, or we can put art on them, whatever, but uh, wanted to make sure that that was not a, uh, you know, a, a tiny little room. Um, and then if I go back into rotate view, you can see for size, uh, these brown tables are the same as the conference table that is in the North Conference Room right now, where I'm actually sitting this very second, uh, the one with the arcade cabinet. So you can see that these, are, these meeting rooms are, are good size, easily six to eight people uh, or, or more comfortably more than eight I would say is definitely going to be a stretch um, but but doable and we can decide we want to put a little like side tables a couple extra chairs Do we want to put like TVs on the wall or something along those lines for doing presentations if we're sh you know, sharing a screen or something like that obviously whiteboards super important um, but we'll, we'll have to figure that out um, uh, as, as we go uh, moving into the rest of sort of continuing to turn through the space uh, over here on the right, I'm going to zoom in on the kitchen a little bit. And so we wanted to keep the kitchen uh, m most easily able to be expanded. And you'll see I didn't drop in like the round cafe tables because I couldn't find the right size um, in the moment that I was working on it. But I f thought that if we use the banquet tables, the expandable banquet tables, those could be useful for having more people at one table and we can lay them out in different ways or you know, intersperse them with the round tables, whatever we want. Um, the, the one downside to the, the location of the kitchen is definitely this, this column, but the columns are everywhere. There's not a whole lot we can do about it. And we've actually been talking about how the column can be useful both for hanging, you know, whether it's hanging pots and pans from, or just like doing something cool with, uh, I think that'll be great. Uh, the the kitchen detail itself, I want to show off a little bit because I've gotten a ton of really great feedback. And this is not, this kitchen layout is a is not final, and actually it's a little bit wrong in some places. But you get just a general sense of what we've done where uh, we've got this run over here with a nice big double base sink. Uh, what's not shown here is on either side of the sink, we will have a dishwasher. That's right, two dishwashers, and they'll be um, pretty nice, uh, sort of the high end uh, of the consumer dishwasher, so they're going to run really well. Hopefully, they'll back up less. It's a dishwasher, I actually, I have at home, and it's been... It's awesome. It's weird to say it's the best dishwasher I've ever owned, but it is. It's true. Uh, and then I'm thinking that we'll also have um, the, the, coffee, uh, the coffee station over here as well, um, potentially on, on one side or the other. I'm thinking probably here on the left of the sink will be where the coffee machine and the grinder are because 
that way it's out of the path of traffic versus being over here. But that's just an idea. It can be anywhere. Um, we just need to keep into mind that the coffee machine needs to be able to run a line for the sink. That's it. Um, a nice big closet here to the left, which we're going to be able to use as a pantry. So whether that is storage for dry goods or, um, you know, people bring in, you bring in your cereal, bring in your snacks and things like that. We can store things in there rather than just being cluttered up on top of the cabinets. Although you will notice that we have a crap load of cabinets planned out, which is uh, which is super nice. And uh, exactly the cabinet layout that we do, we get to choose, we get to decide. So in the very near future, we're going to get the dimensions of the kitchen and we'll do the ikea cabinet planner uh and then the last thing actually where this tall cabinet is right now uh does not belong there but we'll go that'll be the the sort of we'll do like a three-part trash area trash recycling and and compost i think and one of the other really nice things about this building is trash gets removed every day so we don't have to have a trash room we don't have to have trash build up and if our trash usage is more than once a day they can come and pick it up whenever we need it to which is also pretty sweet so yay for our trash situation improving um, also not shown in this layout is a the microwave which will go probably right about here and the uh, the cooktop which will go right right below it uh, for folks that have been asking about an oven unfortunately we cannot put an oven or a gas burner for that matter in this space because of fire ratings but the microwave that we're using is actually has a convection component it's got a broiler built in uh, which is sweet so while it's not going to be great for heavy duty baking uh, there is a real heating element and you can run it like you would a small oven so it's a step up from a microwave oven in a big way uh, and it does actual convection cooking which is pretty sweet uh, and I think it's one, you know, I definitely want to do as best as we can in terms of the kitchen being able to be used like a real kitchen. The fire code's just a real thing. And so I would love to put in a, a gas, uh, you know, gas burner or, or an oven. And we just unfortunately cannot. Um, behind that, behind the kitchen here on the left, this sort of red area, this is the, the new sort of workshop art room uh, space. And so rather than think of this as storage, which I think is how it was labeled on the original plans, this is this is almost like a little little workspace. This is the dark room. This is the screen printing area. This is, we'll have a workbench in here. We can hang up the tools on this back wall. So instead of them being in a pile on the floor, there's like a nice pin board with outlines so you know where something is. And if something is missing, we can see it right away. Um, I'm very excited to see this space come together. Uh, this is new for us, uh, and, and there's a bunch of folks in a, um, the, the crew that runs the dark room and the screen printing room, Michael and Falcone and Lena, have been uh, excited about the evolution of this, um, as well as uh, Jess Mason's uh, been excited to help us set up uh, more of the, a more functional tool area. Um, and I know, uh, like Zach Russell, and uh, Josh Billions have been talking about doing more electronics and soldering and things like that. So this space is going to be lit and ventilated. And we have to figure out sort of the multi-purpose parts for the dark room type stuff, because obviously dark room means no light can get in. But I had a great conversation with Falcone and, and Mike Norcross about how we can do that, both in terms of a short term fix as well as potentially long term fixes. But this is the the initial build. Uh, that we're working on and then directly next to that is our network closet so we'll have a little uh you know room for the network gear for the mac mini for music and, and any other sort of electronics and things like that cabling whatnot um if we spin around meow, 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 and zoom out a little bit more um in that little corner back there um past the uh, workshop you see I put a little lounge in and actually this entire layout is a little bit off um, this thing is is actually slid over just a tiny little bit um, and there's actually there's more space in this little corner than it looks like in this drawing I was just over at the building and they've got them drawn out on the on the floor and it's actually a, a sizable amount of space I think a quiet little sort of sitting area reading area um, as well as potentially another one here outside of the, the, the meeting room and the phone rooms and another lounge over here um, and you can sort of see I dropped another potential lounge or, or a little sitting area um, right in here when it renders. So again, I'm just playing, seeing where stuff fits. Um, these rooms, these uh, this, this this is a smaller. Uh, small, slightly smaller conference room. This is more for like four to six people instead of six to eight. And then next to it, one, two, three, four phone rooms. These are all going to be uh, insulated for sound, which is going to be nice. They're not like isolation booth for recording, 
Um, but unlike the you know the closet that we closets that we currently have, where you're still basically exposed to the outside, and the outside is sort of exposed to you, these will have closable doors. They'll have a la- latch where you can see whether or not they're occupied. A light, and they're uh, they're a nice size. We don't have any furniture in in them in the layout right now. But um, I went over to the space and being able to put actually build in a little table. They'll have data so you can plug into Ethernet and have to worry about your Wi-Fi dropping out while you're on a call. They'll have power, a nice light. Uh, it'll be nice and comfortable and ventilated, so you don't have to worry about it getting stuffy and sweaty in there. Uh, it's gonna be a big upgrade. So, uh, so that is that's what where I'm at. And and like I said, all of this is really just me playing with the floor plan to get a sense of how things lay out, how things fit in space. Um, and and obviously, one of the biggest lessons in doing this for me is that while having a 3D tool like this is helpful for getting a general sense. Uh, I've been doing this long enough to know that the general sense that I have here is not accurate for what it's actually gonna feel like. We're gonna have to actually get into physical space. So um, this was just a an exercise in making sure that uh, we have not massively miscalculated. Uh, we haven't, we've got tons of room, uh, tons of room to flex, tons of room to experiment and grow and lay things out in different ways. Way more breakout tables, which I know is something people were, were interested in. Uh, the same number of full-time spots uh, in, in the current layout that we have here, potentially, depending on how we lay things out, even more we can do. Um, but, uh, but I think a good, we've got the same balance of full-time and flex, and we've got the same number of spots uh, with, with room to spare. So that makes me feel really good. And if we figure out this temporary wall thing, I think we have the ability to create like I said, more, more, more intimate spaces that don't feel like you're in the, you know, in the middle of a football field. Um, create walls that you can have your back against or your side against so you don't feel like people are creeping up on you uh, from behind you, Uh, as well as walls to hang art because that is a huge priority for us as places to actually put the stuff that we like to look at. So lots of room to experiment, lots of room to grow. I'm super, super excited about this, and I hope this tour gives you uh, a sense of uh, a beginning of a sense of what the space is going to feel like. And I guess from this other view, one thing I want to point out is look at all those windows. So much natural light coming in from the south and from the west. And from what I can tell, we're not going to be getting a lot of like direct glare creating sunlight. So it's going to be good light. Um, one of the next conversations we're going to be having is more about the interior light and how, uh, what kinds of fixtures we want, what kinds of bulbs we want, uh, and, and things like that. And we've been working with a friend of Juliet's. His name is Terrell. Uh, and he's been doing awesome work for helping me understand how to approach lighting when it can really be anything. Uh, and the beautiful thing about Terrell's work compared to a lot of the lighting engineers that are really just concerned about lighting coverage, which of course is important, um, he's also thinking about the experience and the feel and the vibe and not just trying to undo a corporate office feel, but actually make things feel cozy and like Indie Hall. Uh, and, and he totally gets it. And I'm really excited to see what he helps us come up with. But ultimately, we'll get to decide what what fixtures we want, what bulbs we want. And, 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 since I know that, you know, upstairs at Indie Hall now being a little bit brighter than downstairs is interesting to people, we're breaking the space up into zones for lighting, um, as well as, I think, sound. So there will be a, a four or five zones where we'll be able to have all of the zones turned on from one place over here by the front door, which will be really cool instead of having to walk throughout the entire space and find all of the light switches. It's a little bit of a scavenger hunt right now. Not just that, they'll be on dimmers. So if we like the light to be a little bit brighter in a certain area or depending on what the outside light is like, we can adjust how bright or dim the lights are. Um, Having that kind of control, I think, is going to play a huge role in creating the feel that we want um, and even being able to change it over time. So I hope you like the little tour. I hope it gave you a sense of where we're doing. Uh, I want to use this as the beginning of a conversation. This is not, we're done, yay. No, this is the very beginning. Um, They're waiting for permits to come back from the city. As soon as permits are back from the city, they're going to start framing. But at that point, we need to start making some decisions about uh, about materials and finishes and the things that we want to build and when. And so that's going to really ramp up over the next 30 days or so. So expect to be hearing more from that. In that vein, if you've watched this long, I have two things for you. One is that every single Tuesday from now until the move, which is likely to be the end of July into August, right? I don't have an exact date until we've actually got some more things in motion. 
Uh, every Tuesday moving forward at 5.30 p.m., we're going to be doing an Indie Hall move, like a mini town hall. I'll have an update of what's going on. I'll have a, a, some questions that we need to answer, opportunity for people to ask other questions, uh, and that'll just be our regular checkpoint. I have not been enjoying the fact that it's only been like three or it's been like three or four weeks between my updates. That doesn't work for me. Um, but what I really want is for us to be able to have an ongoing conversation. And the best way to do that in my mind is to have some sort of weekly standing meeting. So 5.30 p.m. on Tuesdays, right before Night Owls. So it's either at the end of your day if you're here during the day or the beginning of your day if you're coming in for Night Owls. And then after that, we can either you know, get it down to work. Uh, we can crack open some beers or some wine. I know this Tuesday, Michaela is talking about us playing some games, uh, which is going to be super fun, uh, a game called Fibbage, I believe, and I'm totally down for that. So 5.30, no more than an hour. I'm thinking we're going to try and keep it to like 30 minutes, um, which I know is going to be tough, but if we get into a good groove, I think we can do it. So come join us on Tuesday, this upcoming Tuesday, which is the, da -da 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 -da, the 16th. Nope. It's the 17th, Tuesday the 17th at 5.30 p.m. and every Tuesday moving forward. I'll talk about that in a group buzz post. The last thing, and this is really, really important over the next couple of weeks in particular while we're in May, starting today, which is Friday the 13th of May, we're going to be working to start inventorying the stuff that we have at Indy Hall cleaning this place up, tidying it up, basically getting ourselves ready to make the move easier. And even though it's a few months away, I mean, it's only really three months away. How crazy is that? The biggest thing that we have right now uh, as a situation is I think that we need to not forget to take care of the place that we're in right now. And actually taking care of the place we're in now better is just going to make the move go smoother. So uh, that's simple things like tidying up around our desks, looking for stuff that's been here for a while and going, does that really need to live here? Should I throw that out? Should I take it home? Uh, you know, finding stuff that we don't even know whose it is anymore. Try and find the owner for it. And if we can't find the owner for it, find a new home. Uh, the art crew has been talking about doing over the summer a yard sale of stuff that we've collected over the years and just doesn't need to move with us. So look out for more stuff like that. Um, the next few Friday afternoons, if you've got a few minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, a couple of hours that you want to come and pitch in and help us just tidy up Indy Hall and get it ready for, uh, get us, get ourselves ready for the move. Help us do an inventory. Help us understand what we have, what we need to get rid of, and what's going to move with us. That'll play a huge huge, huge help, and it'll make the move go a whole lot smoother. So thanks. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I hope to see you on Tuesdays. I hope to see you on Fridays. I hope to see you soon. I miss you. I love you. <laughs> and, uh, and I hope you're as excited about the new space as I am. Cheers.